Size matters, especially in Formula One. Every gram counts, so the teams and drivers need to make sure they have the perfect setup before they get to the track. How do they do it? I am joined by Head of Aerodynamics, Mike Elliott, to talk us through what's going on here in reception, because I'm told these two cars are the same, the W05. So this is the full-scale car that Lewis won the World Championship in. And behind us, we've got the 60% scale model, which we use to develop that car. In the wind tunnel? Yes. And so how often are you testing this type of setup in the wind tunnel? So by regulation, we're allowed to do 65 runs a week. So uh, this car would have been in the wind tunnel for the whole year, and we'd have done 65 runs roughly every week on it. And how long does it take to assemble a smaller car, the 60% model? So what we term as a model is actually a spine with all the electronics and the balance inside. Um, and what you can see around it is just cladding. So to actually build the spine and the balance section, that's a long period of work. That's probably a couple of months work for a team of people. But we'll only do that once for a new technology of model. The various cladding we can see here, that will be changed every run we do in the wind tunnel. So the outside isn't as important as the inside of the wind tunnel? So in terms of the instrumentation and the technology, no. Um, the outside is really just getting the aerodynamic shape right. But in terms of the measurements we want, all of that is done by the capability that's inside that model. So what are we talking money-wise, Mike? How much would one of these set you back? Well, it's a really difficult question because I think um, if we were to go and buy a model from somewhere else and buy all that technology, it'd be expensive, maybe half a million pound. But actually, most of this is developed in-house. So the balances are developed in-house and all the internal kit. So the only thing we buy is the electronics. And then, of course, it's just raw materials and people's time. And then if you to look at the cost over a season, Obviously, if you count for all the panel changes we're making, then that's quite a big cost. And so how important is development in the wind tunnel? How does it translate on track? And how much more work needs to be done before the W07 car is ready? So it's very important. Um, we have other techniques for measuring aero performance. So we use computational fluid dynamics, which is a wind tunnel in the computer. And that's brilliant. That gives us loads of information. But its accuracy to the track isn't as good. And the other issue is that the car sees lots of conditions on track, lots of your angles, steer angles and roll angles, and to try and do all that in CFD would just be impossible. So the wind tunnel is vitally important to what we do. And because aerodynamics probably pays, or gives the biggest amount of lap time that we do for anything we do here, then it's, it's crucial to the car development. In terms of the W07, we're within weeks of defining the Race 1 car. So we've already done the launch car, we're very close to the Race 1 car now. And are you feeling excited, confident? This time of the year is always really exciting. It's exciting and it's, and it's worrying at the same time. During the season, you know where everybody else is and that's, that's really helpful. Whether you're behind or whether you're in front, you know what your targets are. This time of the year, it's just excitement. You don't know where everybody else is. You just know where you are. So bring on Melbourne. Yes, definitely.